Hello everyone, my name is Siani Roberts Jordan. I am Class of 2020's Vice President. Today we are all here to celebrate a very, very special occasion. Today is the day that we all graduate. Today is the day that we all become alumni of Morel Dobbins CTE High School. Speaking of alumni, we have a very, very special guest. She's, in a, she's a basketball Hall of Fame player and coach. She's a three-time Olympic gold medalist and was elected to carry the United States flag at the opening ceremony of 2004 Summer Olympics. Her name is Dawn Staley. Dr. Damon, faculty, staff, parents, and 2020 graduates of Mural Dobbins Career in Technical Education High School. Thank you for giving me a moment of your time today. As a Dobbins alum, I am honored to speak to you but saddened that it has to be in this way. We are surely in uncertain times. There are times we've read about in history books from days long gone, a faraway time when technology was rudimentary and penicillin was the cure for all medical concerns. Today is an unfortunate way we become history. We become the people who live through a pandemic. Now your children will read about the pandemic of 2020 in their history books, and you'll be able to give them a firsthand account of what it was really like. You'll tell them stories of quarantine and long lines at grocery stores. You'll tell them about social distancing and mandatory masks. You'll tell them how, for the first time in the country's history, not only doctors, but nurses, sanitation workers, grocery store clerks, truck drivers, and the always unsung teachers were our heroes. You'll be able to pinpoint with accuracy exactly when the pandemic occurred, your senior year at Dobbins Tech. You'll drudge up memories of senior year milestones missed and will explain how all your classes, even your graduation, was done virtually. You'll share all the highs and lows of the start of 2020, and in the end, you'll tell them how you've made it through. And thinking of making it through, I am gonna share something with you that I have not had the time to reflect on until now. For us older people, quarantine has had a way of reinforcing us to slow down. And in doing so, has freed up time for us to look at our lives with renewed perspective. When I was asked to give this address, it was doing one of the most reflective moments uh and and coincidentally i was thinking about my teenage years my years at dobbins when i reflect on my 18 year old self leaving dobbins leaving north philly and going to college i was reminded how much i thought i didn't know and how unprepared i felt i remember feeling great angst but it wasn't necessarily about the prospect of being in college I had basketball and I knew I would get through college. What I didn't know and what I didn't have the maturity to articulate at the time was whether or not I was prepared to be in a world that wasn't North Philly. The question was, had North Philly prepared me to be a citizen of the largest society? Had I learned anything that could be generalized to a world outside of the world? I had become accustomed to. In my quarantine reflections, I realized something really important about being raised in Philadelphia, specifically North Philly. It prepares you to conquer the world and adversity in a way most other neighborhoods and cities can't. I thought long and hard about the things I knew that others did not. I recall situations I've been in after college, after leaving college, and the ways in which I handled each. I remembered how I used to think my college friends and teammates were so silly, how they would get themselves in the craziest circumstances or situations I saw coming a mile away. They called me names like skeptical, distrustful, or suspicious, which I was fine with. I knew better than to run into a building when everyone else was running out. They didn't. At the time, for lack of better definition, I called them silly or sheltered. But in 
thinking critically what they really were was unprepared. The towns and cities from which they came had not prepared them to be in the real world. So things like leaving a bike unlocked but expecting it to be there when they returned and being seriously surprised when it wasn't was their hard lessons. Lessons I had learned long before. Back then, for the life of me, I could not understand how they so easily missed certain environmental and social cues. How they just walked through life without the intuition or instinct that came so naturally to me. And thinking back now, I realized how prepared I actually was. Being raised in North Philly, there are certain characteristics and abilities that you inherit that just come with the territory. You're always going to be aware of your surroundings. You're, you're going to have this innate, innate sense of knowing when something is about to jump off. You're going to know who you can mess with and who to stay away from. You're going to be able to sum up someone with just a glance. You're going to have this weird North Philly confidence and think you're much harder than you actually are. And most importantly, you're going to be brave, courageous, strong, whether you want to or not. Of course, at 18, I didn't recognize these characteristics as skills. In fact, I didn't recognize them at all. They were a part of me and how I moved in the world. The first time I noticed the difference between myself and my peers was at a, an Olympic team practice. Most of my teammates were from the South and Midwest with one player from Los Angeles. I was the only player from a big East Coast city. They would always tell me I was different, that there was something in the way I carried myself that was noticeably different to them. I, I never noticed anything different about me until one day North Philly came out. I remember so vividly, we were doing a drill and our coach separated the, the team into two groups. Somehow my group kept losing. And the punishment for losing was running. By our third loss, I was pretty sure our coach was cheating for the other group. Each time we ran, I got more and more upset. Then if I lose fairly, I can accept my consequence. But you can't cheat me and expect me to have a, a great attitude about losing. This is how the Philly in me kicked in. Number one, be aware of your surroundings. I noticed the coach kept huddling together with, which didn't usually happen during drills. I knew something was up. Two, know who you are or know who you can mess with and who you can't. Our head coach was really stern. So I called the assistant coach over and asked her what was going on. She gave me the, you know what's up look. Three, since when something is about to jump off, after my group's fourth straight loss, the group started teasing us, and my group began mumbling threats under their breath. It was getting tense. Number four, sum up people in just a glance. I looked at the faces of my group and knew they were mad, but also got the feeling they were afraid to say anything. Five, the weird North Philly confidence. I stood on the line after our seventh straight loss and said, I don't care what you do. You're not going to break me. Six, be brave, courageous, strong. After our ninth loss, we lined up to run. And as soon as the whistle blew, I took off. Like screaming, you can cheat us if you want, but you will not break us. We will bend, but we will not break. We will not break. I made sure to lead the pack. I ran hard and stayed out front, screaming my head off, so everyone in the gym, including my cheating coach, could hear me. My teammates had my back and took my lead. We band together as a unit and stood firm in our conviction that we were ready to take on whatever they threw at us, cheating and all. Two things happened that day. My teammates were finally able to use that incident to illustrate their point that I operated differently. And... My coaches later disclosed that the drill was used to identify the group's natural leader. I was one of the youngest and smallest players on the team that year, but stood head and shoulders above the rest, uh, being only myself. 
By now, I'm sure you ascertain my belief that being from North Philly is my superpower. It's what I consider the foundation of my success and of what I am most proud. I would not have been the same player had I been born in any other city. <clears throat> that I know for sure. My approach to the game, my fearlessness, my ability to anticipate action and outcomes. All Philly. You have the same abilities. But chances are yours have yet to be tested, but they will. Know that you are prepared, in most cases, over-prepared. The world will not throw anything you can't handle, I promise. I have been all over the world and have probably met thousands of people throughout my career. And what I can tell you is that my Philly roots, those characteristics I described, have kept me safe and sane. My intuition has always been my best guide and I rely on it for everything. If it tells me not if it tells me it's not safe, I don't go. If it tells me someone is not right, I leave them alone. You are armed with the same intuitions and instincts. Trust them. There is nothing special about me, really. I have literally sat in the same classroom you sat in and have walked the same streets you've walked. In essence, I am you. There is absolutely no reason your success can't surpass mine. My skill was, of course, basketball. But being that you're completing your high school education at a career and technical school, you have undoubtedly honed your own skill sets. And although our talents may be different, what we have in common is we grew up in this. We grew up the same. The education North Philly unintentionally provides vigilance, perceptiveness, confidence, and courage will serve you as much as your chosen skill, and the two should never divorce. Whether you decide to go into the workforce or the college, go understanding that you are already uniquely prepared and your greatness and success will only be measured by the effort you give, nothing else. Give great effort in everything you do. About 100% of you won't remember who your graduation speaker was 20 years from now, and that's okay. What I know you'll remember is the moment in time when the world shut down. However, what I hope you remember are my words. You are exceptionally positioned to be a great citizen of this world. Be fearless. No on occasion you may bend, it happens but don't you ever break. Congratulations, class of 2020. Be well, be great. Thank you.